Uh, okay, so yeah, our next talk is from uh, Zhao Wenpei, who's also been visiting here in the last month, and he's uh, going to present one of the things that he's been doing uh, during that very short period of time. Um, yeah, so electron tomography of giant magnetons. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, thanks, thanks uh, for the introduction for Rich. And uh, uh, I'm a PhD student from Liao Group in Peking University. And uh, uh, today I want to show the uh, progress and update uh, uh, in the past uh, half, uh, one and a half months in Cambridge. And uh, first of all, I want to uh, say thanks for uh, Rich and Hassan for their great help for this work. And uh, today I want to talk about uh, the biogenicity of giant magnetophosphorus. Uh, we use cryo electron tomography to do uh, this work. And um, <coughs> oh, sorry. So uh, our research object is giant magnetophosphorus. So uh, in previous studies, uh, there are four types uh, giant magnetophosphorus crystals have been found. So uh, uh, Schumann et al. had found the three types of giant magnetophosphorus uh, during PETM sediments in New Jersey, uh, the spearhead, spindle, and needle. And uh, 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 Professor Tang had found another uh, types of uh, giant magnetophosphorus called the giant bullet uh, during, uh, during the PETM and the Miko uh, near the South Ocean near Antarctic. So, these giant mag magnetophosphorus has a larger grain size than conventional modern MTB synthesized uh, biogenic magnetite. Uh, their size range from 500 nanometers to uh, four microns. And for <coughs> conventional and the MTB synthesized uh, biogenic uh, magnetite, they are, they are mainly maybe 35 to uh, 120 nanometers. So they are absolutely giant monsters for, yeah, for bacteria, yeah. So, and also because uh, pre previous studies have found this giant magnetic fossil in PTM and MICO, they are past hyperthermal events. So uh, some studies suggest that they are possibly tied to this uh, ancient hyperthermal events. So uh, they think maybe global warming will uh, change the weathering or sedimentation uh, process and uh, which can promote the synthesis of these giant magna magnetite crystals. So, but because uh, we uh, have never found the modern bacteria can synthesize these types of giant magnetic crystals. So the biological origin is remains, always remains controversial. So, uh, here, I, as a following show, uh, maybe three methods to detect the giant magnetophosphorus in uh, sediments. Uh, first one is uh, we just use electron microscope to image the, uh, these particles after magnetic extraction of sediments. And also we can use X-ray uh, microscope to image it. And uh, recently, recently uh, at all they uh, <coughs> proposed a uh, rock magnetic methods. They use high resolution fork measurements to detect the needle particles because needle particles is, have extreme uh, large aspect ratio. Uh, and uh, then they have very large uh, coercivity. So uh, they think uh, maybe we use high resolution uh, fork measurements. We can uh, detect this uh, needle shaped uh, fossils in sediments. But for the other three types of fossils, it's difficult to just uh, uh, detect it for the bulk sample. It's very difficult. So uh, Peng Fei, he, he is a postdoc in our group. He recently do a systematic uh, microscope in many sediments cores, and uh, they found uh, this giant magnetophosphorus is not uniquely associated with uh, hyperthermal events. He found the uh, during, before, after the PETM, uh, he found all four types of giant magnetophosphorus. So uh, maybe this, this magnetophosphorus may be very, uh, uh, it's widespread uh, in many sediments. 
And uh, we also do some uh, morphology characteristics and uh, also do simul uh, macromatic simulation to determine its domain states. Uh, we can see the domain states in this magnetic phase diagram, and uh, we can see the spearhead, this, this triangles, they are mainly multi domain or multi vortex states. And for giant bullets, this, this, this uh, blue circles and uh, this green. Uh, diamonds is spindle, they are mainly vortex state. And for needle, uh, this, this orange uh, squares, and uh, uh, they are mainly single domain states. And uh, this is small blue circles is uh, modern MTB synthesized uh, small bullet shaped particles. Uh, they are also mainly SD uh, domain states. And uh, uh, this pink dots is uh, prismatic and equant. Uh, biogenic uh, magnetite, and uh, they are mainly SD domain states and uh, some uh, uh, vortex states. So, uh, and the macromagnetic simulation shows similar results. And uh, we also discuss the biogenic origin of giant mag mag magnetite crystals. And uh, in modern MTB, uh, previous study had found that they can synthesize very small needles, maybe about 200 and 300 nanometers. And uh, we also found uh, uh, these small needles at uh, uh, during PETM sediments. And uh, maybe the, uh, although they, they have different size with giant needle, but uh, they do have very similar uh, morphology. Yeah. And uh, we can see th this is a growth pattern of uh, modern bullet particles. We can see the Ys will increase and then uh, tend to be flat uh, with increasing length. And uh, we also uh, uh, we also check the uh, growth pattern uh, for th this this orange square is a uh, giant needle, and uh, we can see giant needles is this Ys is about uh, 100 nanometers. It's, it's flat. And uh, but for this this blue circles, they are giant bullet. Uh, it's, it's similar, a uh, different growth pattern, and and, and it's 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 uh, growth isotopically with a similar um, aspect ratio. So yeah, so so it, it's just some morphological uh, analogy and uh, to show the pattern. Uh, yeah, to compare the uh, modern crystals to the giant magnetic fossils, but uh, uh, we need to be more detailed and uh, comparison work to see the giant needle fossils and uh, to further uh, support the biogenic origin. Yeah, so that's why we came here and uh, we have uh, we have selected some uh, giant magnetic fossil abundant uh, set, uh, samples and uh, we have do a uh, conventional TM observation in PKU and uh, uh, to confirm the extensive of giant magnetic fossil in our sample. And then we came to Cambridge to do cryo electron tomography to take images from different <laughs> angles and then use uh, Fourier transform uh, transformation to reconstruct a 3D structure of these particles. And uh, we have found uh, 20 target particles here, and uh, I will show some preliminary reconstructed results. Yeah, so this is giant bullet uh, reconstructed results. And uh, the above finger is a stem, a stem image of giant bullet. And uh, uh, we can see for the, uh, for the bullet uh, at the tip, it's, it's a dome shaped. And uh, at the tail, it is a very flat cross section. So both of these three uh, bullets have similar shapes. And uh, also there are some small conventional biogenic magnetite uh, st uh, 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 sticked here with the uh, giant particles. And uh, uh, th this is a preliminary uh, results. And uh, we also need to uh, carefully segment uh, these uh, particles. Yeah, and this is giant bullet. And uh, oh, another thing uh, needed to be, uh, uh, we can see uh, this, this bullet is not a cylinder. Uh, we can see maybe there's some uh, 
crystal faces in the side. So it looks some uh, oblique or twisted crystal face uh, on the side here. And uh, we also found uh, some kink the giant bullet. And this one, it looks like a saw. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's head is uh, inclined groove. And uh, this one, there's a very simple, uh, uh, a little uh, kinked on the tube. So it's a different uh, kinked mode. And uh, we have compared this giant bullet to the conventional bullet uh, synthesized by modern bacteria. We can say, uh, uh, basically we can find the male, uh, very similar uh, crystals and uh, but they have different sizes. So uh, they have similar morphology, but a different size. So uh, maybe they, they are synthesized by some ancient bacteria, but we don't know. So yeah. And uh, here shows the spearhead results. And uh, we can see uh, for spearhead, uh, the tip of spearhead is, uh, is a pyramidal shaped and uh, the tail, there's for some spearhead there is stalks and for some they don't have stalks, but uh, the cross, uh, uh, the cross section of spearhead is uh, basically a flattened uh, hydrogen. So, uh, this bullet uh, uh, particle also uh, stuck some small um, biogenic magnet particles. And uh, for spearhead, when, when I think of this spearhead, I always think of some, you know, some human made tools. So uh, here I showed some spearhead from Aborigines in Australia. So it, it looks similar. So it's, it's very difficult to imagine. So this spearhead is synthesized by some, you know, some uh, non-biogenic or inorganic process. So, uh, yeah, but we don't know. So, but as we think, maybe it's some it's it's uh, through some very precise controlled process to uh, synthesize this crystal, these crystals. And uh, uh, this is the reconstruction result of needle. And uh, we can say for this needle, it had very uh, symmetric. Uh, uh, side faces and uh, a little oblique uh, at the tip. And for this one, it's, it's, it's a little similar to the bullet. It has some uh, twisted uh, crystal faces. And uh, yeah, but we, we don't know. The, maybe this, there are different <coughs> types of needles. So yeah. Okay, but uh, unfortunately, we, we didn't find the spindle particles because they're it's very rare in sediments. So we have uh, found the three types of giant magnet fossils. And uh, we, uh, this is just a very preliminary uh, uh, reconstruction. Uh, we, maybe we need some manual segmentation in the uh, software called the Dragonfly to uh, smooth and uh, optimize the reconstruction process. And uh, I want to just a uh, simple look forward for the future work. First, uh, we, we actually we have 10 more uh, images and uh, we have a good, uh, maybe very good result, but uh, we need some maybe manual sanitation and to uh, look like this, this feature, there's not only a needle, but uh, some small biogenic magnetites arranged in chain. So maybe uh, we can carefully segment it in the uh, software. And uh, we can also do a uh, micromagnetic simulation based on the reconstructed structure. And uh, to say it's domain states, maybe we can calculate uh, uh, some rock, magnet rock magnetic properties. And uh, also there are some biogenic uh, 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 biogeochemical signature to uh, further support the bio, uh, biological origin of uh, these fossils. Uh, recently, there is a paper in PNAS and they used atom uh, probe tomography to see the uh, element distribution inside the mineral. They, uh, they do tomography on biogenic magnetites and uh, also use inorganic, inorganic magnetite as control. And they found 
inside the biogenic magnetite, they found some uh, carbon and nitrogen. Uh, these are, you know, some organic related uh, elements. Maybe this can be a biogenic fingerprints of these minerals. And for the inorgan inorganic, inorganic uh, uh, magnet particles, there are no uh, uh, carbon or nitrogen in inside the particles. And also, uh, this, this is a very simple uh, favor sample we have done. And uh, there is a small, uh, there is a spare head, and we prepared uh, maybe to do more mm -hmm. geochemical analysis. Maybe we will try to uh, oxygen or uh, iron acetate. But uh, because this, this particle, we call it a giant, but for geochemical analysis, it's, it's still too small. So maybe it's difficult, but we want to try. Maybe we can combine this geochemical signature to the morphology to further support the biological origin. Yeah, so here I just uh, simply summarize the conclusions. And uh, we have done precise reconstructions and, uh, and the, we have very unique 3D structures and uh, specific crystal forms. So maybe it's uh, uh, possible by the Lord controlled uh, mineralization process. And uh, particularly for giant bullet crystals, we, we can compare them with the small bullet particles synthesized by modern MTB. And uh, it looks similar. So, but uh, yeah, it is a pre <coughs> preliminary analysis. analysis so I, uh, yeah. So this is my talk. So feel free to ask the questions. Thank you. Very good, thanks, Owen. A lot of progress in a short amount of time. Um, yeah, do we have any questions? Uh, two, uh, three, three. Uh, <laughs> um, so, were you good at presentation one of your um, tomography reconstruction? I think on slide 11 has like blobs coming out of those angles. Are those real? Or is that the same if you go to the slide 11? Um, and then, yeah. yeah, those ones in the third thing, what was that? Is that real? Like the thing uh, that? Yeah, I think uh, because we just use simple uh, threshold segmentation method, so I think it's not so, it's not real particles, it's just uh, some noises. Uh, if we want to say it's a small particles, we, maybe we need a manually segmentation. Carefully segmentation, but uh, for the automatic thresholding uh, segmentation, I think uh, it's noise. Yeah, yeah it's noise. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, just, a, just a quick general question. So, yeah, I get why these um, bacteria might like elongate yeah. um, uh, crystals, but why specifically bullet shapes? Spare was this evolutionary advantage to bullet shapes? Actually, uh, I think uh, I have no idea. I, it, it, it's still some, uh, maybe, maybe it's, uh, because uh, the bullet particle is not so effective in you know, navigation or direction. So because uh, if, if we have a small uh, equivalent particles in chain, so it's very effective, but for bullet, it's very strange. But uh, I think for some, uh, they a lot is they they try to culture and from some ge uh, genetic uh, analysis and uh, but they uh, still don't have no idea so yeah it's very strange. Yeah. Yeah. I think they can only culture so true they can only culture by one strain of yeah. and one strain that can make these things but that's a bit not theory. Yeah I think we can is Gen 1? Gen 1, look at it. Is. Uh, we even don't know you. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, but what I'm saying is like, I know there are some groups trying to cultivate these, but I think cultivating these bacteria is, yeah. is really difficult. Yeah, yeah. I think, they, I think they've been able to cultivate one strain of bacteria yeah. to keep it alive. I don't know. <laughs> so you, you tend to see these kind of um, shapes of bacteria in um, actual spores, like, like, 
And these are the ones that are very difficult to, to, to cultivate in your heart. Um, you're right, there are a couple of groups trying to do it, but um, it is, it's, they just, they just don't like the market conditions. They want to feed on some nature and environment. <laughs> But yeah, I guess the question is why, if they're not biogenic, why they why they do this rather than just make normal? So they have to invest a lot of energy to create something that big. And uh, they may be magnetically viable in terms of navigation, but still, why would you bother? <laughs> well, there, has to, there has to be some evolutionary pressure driving them in this direction mm -hmm. at that particular time. And then, of course, you know, do we, do we see them again after the PEGM? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So before we uh, we see it, only unique ecological uh, warming plants, yeah. people assume there's something strange. <coughs> if you search carefully, there's a vacuum department. So every <coughs> now, no, that's for <laughs> sure. No. Probably just we look at the place where there are extreme events, but actually, probably we learn an awful lot from just looking at the more boring normal times as well. So, I mean, in terms of, of um, the magnetic response of these kind of weird geometries. I mean, I think there's, there's growing evidence that um, you know, magnetosomes don't just serve as a navigational tool in, in, in these type of bacteria. They, you know, they have a um, basically a, 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 um, an effect in reducing oxidation states within the bacteria, so it can actually act as a, a, a reactive oxygen a species scavenger. Which, if you don't do that in biological cells, essentially they die, right? And, and there's kind of a working hypothesis that the origin of uh, magnetosomes in MTB wasn't actually for me taxes, but it was actually as a, 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 an ROS protective agent during early up, where essentially um, early bacterial life were exposed to, to much more harmful uh, conditions. It then later became you know, co opted for. Uh, I mean, it's a tactical advantage. But there's also some, some evidence that suggests that um, the, the magnetic zones themselves may actually be able, effectively a biomarker, and that the magnetic fields that they generate may contribute to the um, chemical processes and, and the physical chemical pathways in controlling migration or diffusion of, of, of um, uh, ions within the, um, the bacteria itself. How robust that is is still debated, but you might find that, that these unusual geometries will create unusual string fields, and that might then tie into to the biology. Um, when these grow, you've got this balance of um, the, 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 the growth of the crystal, but biological constraint because they grow within a, a membrane. So they are physically bounded, and the shape and, and the flexibility of that membrane will flow towards a, a Control on the, um, on the shape as well. Cool stuff. Uh, no further questions? Then uh, thanks to Joanne again.